I'm just putting the, the study up on screen so you guys can see anxiety, exposure, and the risk for depression, anxiety, or psychosis, Journal of Clinical Psychiatry, 2015, so you guys can see the abstract and the conclusion down below. Take a look at this study, all right? All right, where is it? Systemic administration of curcumin affects anxiety-related behavior in a rat model. So it's interesting. So what we're trying to look at here is results suggest that curcumin has an anxiety-like effect on biochemicals and behavior. Uh, it, it may be a useful agent to alleviate or treat psychiatric disorders similar to those observed in patients with PTSD. So what are they saying here? They're saying in, a, in this rat study, giving curcumin actually resolved and significantly had a benefit on anxiety. Now, why is this? Well, it's because it has natural anti-inflammatory benefits. And, and the postulate is that by reducing inflammation in the brain and in the body, that also helps with mood and anxiety. Now, we don't want to just rely on a supplement. So people that are watching this right now, don't just say, hey, I'm saying to fix your anxiety, get curcumin. <laughs> fix all the foundational things that set the table that drive inflammation. And then once you have the foundation, then you can go dig deeper and using specific supplements to reduce inflammation like curcumin, um, like Boswellia or frankincense. You can also, there's systemic enzymes that can be taken away from food. There's a lot of good higher dose fish oil, ginkgo. These are excellent nutrients that can help drive down inflammation. A lot of the bioflavonoids and some of our lower sugar fruit like berries and quercetin, those kind of things. I know there's studies on um, a handful of blueberries a day can reduce inflammation in the brain too. I know we talked about that in the past. So inflammation plays a major role and get the foundation right. Because if you have a lot of dysbiosis, but you're trying to take curcumin to cover up the inflammation, fix the gut stuff first, fix the adrenals and the sympathetic overload first, fix the food and the blood sugar, and then you can dive in deeper with extra functional medicine, nutritional uh, tools. Yeah, yeah, good point. And I'll just say it in another way, which is that you could take all the generic stuff, meaning generic natural stuff, as you mentioned, Boswellia, curcumin, potentially high dose fish oil to reduce inflammation. Maybe you're going to lower the anxiety some, but you're still not getting to the big root of it, which for me was gut infections. I had parasites. I had H. pylori. I had major bacterial overgrowth. I had candida problems. I had mold problems. All those things were affecting my gut, which were affecting my brain. So I was having just out of the blue anxiety. I mean, some points I was panicking. I thought I was dying in some situations. My blood pressure was going crazy for a while. I mean, it was all related to these toxin issues. And so I encourage people get some of the labs run so you can figure out what the heck's going on. The first place to start obviously is going to be a stool test. So we run a DNA stool test that you can do at home and you get that back to the lab. And then you can get a really good workup on what type of infections do you have? Is it just bacteria? Or do you have parasites? What about your gut inflammation? Have you measured that? Because if you're anxious and we see high gut inflammation, we're going to go ding, ding, ding. Look at the connection there. And then we mentioned on the oat test, there's not GABA, but we can do trial runs. I manufacture a chewable version of GABA that we use. It's pharma GABA, which is fermented and bioavailable. So we use that. And if people have a good response to that, then we assume that they had a low GABA situation. If they take one or two of those and then they feel better, then, hey, we're, we're pretty happy.